Well, hello, everyone. I uh, hope you're in here. If you could get, just uh, give me a hello in the chat screen, and then I'll know you're here. The thing with it is, is that uh, we seem to be going through a lot of different uh, experiences lately, and uh, this ex this has got to do with a bit of a, a suffering that's going on. And we know that suffering is only about the ego, only about it's the ego that's suffering. And... Uh, this is so important right now for us to get is that the suffering is just sh teaching us how to come into my come into your own uh magical consciousness there is two consciousnesses uh the one consciousness of course, is, uh, I'm just drawing you something here, the one consciousness, and then we have a second consciousness, right? Now, the first consciousness here is this programmed consciousness that we've been living under, and this is what's under a bit of attack right now. A attack right now, it will be this way for some time. And this is our, our social consciousness, right? And we're moving into, we're moving into this God consciousness that's within all of us. Okay. So this God consciousness that's in all of us, um, is taking precedence. This is how come we're seeing so much uh, reaction going on in the world of things right now. And this also means that we need to get it together. And this is how come we're seeing so much havoc going on because literally it's pushing us into this greater consciousness, if you will, because that's really the only out is for us to come into this uh, magical consciousness in ourselves and start to live from that magical consciousness. Now, this isn't foreign to any of you because you started out that way as a child. You started out in that magical consciousness and you were programmed not to be in that magical consciousness. And that program that we have going on uh, that says that it's not okay to be in that magical consciousness is now under fervor. So I don't know if you've noticed it in your life, but things are starting to, uh, as the vibrations increase on this planet, uh, we're having to face things, right? And I, I'm no different. I'm facing things as well. And sometimes it, you know, it looks a little, a little off. But yet, I know, thank God that I learned what I learned when I was younger. And thank God I'm sharing and teaching with people how to move in to that magical state within themselves. Because now they have a freedom within themselves to be their own sovereign creator, their own sovereign God, goddess. And that they live separate from the reality that's going on out there in the world. So as we understand that suffering is about the ego suffering, that we're really, as our infinite self, we're not suffering because there's no suffering in the infinite. We aren't suffering at all if we move into that consciousness. But you, can you see how this is pushing us into that that state of consciousness that the more that we're experiencing all of the stuff that we're we were experiencing with the you know with the with the resistance and you know things not working out and all that it's moving us into 
our state of natural being, who we truly are. Uh, you can post questions, if you like, into the chat room if uh, you have any questions. I see that uh, Garda is here from the Netherlands. Um, also, Tinka is here from the Netherlands. Wonderful. All kinds of different places. Jim and Kathy, they're from the US and I don't know the other ones that are here where they're from but if you have any questions please put them in, put them in the chat room there is a bit of a delay so I'll I'll continue on until the questions come these techniques to go into this state of consciousness are quite simple and they're quite quite easy for you to start to experience what it's like to go into that state. So me here right now in this state, um, I'm when I drop into that state of consciousness into the infinite. The personality that is Dwayne is put to the side. Now, this is where we do most of our work together when we're doing uh, the Discoveries program is that we enter into a state of mind that is a state of mind and heart that is this greater consciousness. From that greater consciousness, it's easier, much easier to work on problems. Usually when you enter into that state of consciousness, there is no problems. Um, because the problems were only a product of the conscious mind or the ego. The ego likes to keep you entertained and keep you off the subject of going into the, inter into the eternal to this sacred self that you are. It takes a commitment and it takes some dedication to go into this state of mind when you're being bombarded with everything else that's out there in the world. But there's no suffering there. Because when you think about it, how can the infinite who has never been born or never died, that part of you, how can it suffer? Because the infinite part of you, the part that they tried so hard to hypnotize you out of in society, that part of you is connected to all things. It's connected to all wisdom. It's about letting go rather than learning anything new. So when I take people through the discoveries program, they experience what would appear to be magical things, magical shifts in their lives. And I'm not doing that to them. It's them getting to know themselves in that state. And I've been at it a while since 1999 and I knew the value of stepping in between your thoughts disappearing into a place inside of yourself that is not conflicted with everything that's going on in the world because in that space that's the only way we're ever going to change it if we shift into a new consciousness I like to term it as the magical consciousness because, you know, I work with the inner child. I work with helping people to come into that childlike nature inside of themselves and start to play and create. And I have this feeling that source energy or whatever you want to call that is a very playful energy. It's not 
all serious and stoic because that's the ego and it wouldn't be an ego would it we only develop that here on planet earth that ego aspect that alternate consciousness if you take a look at a baby you take a look at a a, a child well just like if i just move aside here and you take a look at this picture and that little baby reaching for source energy right because the baby doesn't know it can't <laughs> and it likes source energy and it loves being right we started out that way we started out loving and and not seeing that any sort of re reaction towards being source energy ourselves so what happened well what happened was some hypnosis happened and society hypnotized us and influenced us to be something other than what we started out to be okay i love this painting because you can see the different there's one missing because i can't get that one but there's the baby there's the there's the 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 child and the teenager there's the mother and actually up above is the grandmother and violetta painted that and and they're in a bubble so there there's the different ages in a bubble and the baby is reaching for source energy and wanting to touch source energy you see we don't have inhibitions uh, we don't have inhibitions we don't think that we're lower than source or all of that stuff that we try to convince ourselves of is bullshit because children don't do that and they come in this way so this is the importance why we want to do a certain type of inner child work is to awaken that child again in ourselves because in awakening that childlike nature inside of ourselves, we start seeing the world as a miracle. We start playing. We start seeing uh, beautiful childlike uh, ways of looking at life, playful, fun, curious. You know, these are the things that are missing. This is why we're suffering. We're suffering because we're not plugged in. We've unplugged and plugged into a society that says you got to do this, you got to wear these clothes, you got to be this tall, you got to have this kind of look, you got to. Babies don't care about that. Children don't care about that until they reach a certain age. And that's where the influence happens. So it's really important to and for us to get some work done and we need to commit to that kind of work for ourselves to step out of one state and move into another and be committed about staying in this state over here being committed and dedicated to it setting up whatever type of discipline that you want to set up that you do something every morning you do something every morning even afternoon if you want or or evening but you do something out of the day that you step out of the societal consciousness and you do something here now this could be as simple as going for a walk this could your meditation your yoke your yoga can be anything but that yoga because it doesn't have to be being twisty and bendy it y your yoga is your 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 dharma your connection to source energy and doing a discipline that keeps you in that so every morning you get up and you may write that might be your your yoga your yoke you may get up in the morning and when everybody's asleep and you're in your own time and you start thinking about uh uh your own spiritual evolution and what that would feel like 
and step into actually doing actual movements, you know, uh, that would bring that into yourself. We start getting involved with our own connection. We stop waiting for it to happen because it's not going to happen until we actuate it. You need to have a commitment. You need to, you need to have a dedication. You need to learn some things. What I have found is that a lot of things out there in the world are very complex. They're, the complexity is getting to us. The, the, the so much information. And where do we go? We're getting confused. And we need to just stop. Take a breath. And realize that you started out as source energy. Let's take a look at this thing from another direction instead of you having to be something or having to be someone else like we learned in the beginning that we had to be something else what if we just let go and just became ourself to become you as source energy moving out into the world connected connected to your your own truth it's a novel idea really and it seems to work very well with people that are in either the course going through the 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 discoveries program they experience magic in their life. They experience a shift from the doldrums of being on that repeated hamster wheel of eternal Groundhog Day of the same thing over and over again. And they say, you know what? I really know that I'm something else deep inside. And... I'm ready to let go. I'm making a commitment today to let go of my ego and actually seeing it for what it really is and how it's how it's infiltrated in everything, you know, convincing me that things are difficult, that things are, you know, not abundant, that things are all of these things. And it's just the ego having its way with you. And when you step out into the eternal, you step out into your sacred beingness that you are, this sovereign being who has never been born and it's never died. It's eternal. Then you step into a place inside of you that is abundant. It's, it's, a, it's a natural thing. Like I explained about the corn. You know, you take a look at an ear of corn, how many seeds are in it and how many seeds uh, you, know, you take one of those seeds and it grows another plant with so many ears of corn. It's very abundant. Nature is abundant. It's a natural thing. What's unnatural? Very unnatural is that there is scarcity. And if we think about that, that's what the ego fears so much, is that fear of scarcity. No, there isn't. You're born in a magical consciousness, and you're trained to put it aside and take on a societal mask and live in the way that someone else sees you ought to live with scarcity you know that you can't heal yourself i mean it's your body for god's sakes right it belongs to you and you're inside that body you're an infinite spirit inside you 
that has never been born, nor will it ever die. And you have the freedom to have a different idea or a different feeling inside you and have it wash all through your body, changing and healing you. This is who you are. And you came here and you showed up because you knew this to begin to spread it in the world, to begin to spread this magical consciousness in the world, to change the vibration of this big blue ball floating in space to the inhabitants here, and not all of them, just some of them. But as you can feel the energy that's happening right now in our world, it's, it's shifting and it's creating something very powerful. And we'll never come to this place ever again of being so disempowered. And thank God for your enemies because they teach you how to reach in deeper to yourself. So I'm going to take some time here for questions. I see there's 19 people here. And if you have any questions, please post them in the chat room. I guess with this setup, I can actually bring you in to, to a chat. I'm not sure how that's done, but we'll, we'll take a look at it at another time. Emma says she likes the free will activation video. Uh, I loves it. So that's cool. I thank you, Emma. My desire coming to this coming here, I mean, I went through, I went through all kinds of stuff. Let me tell you. I mean, to be as awake as I was, you know, popping out and not giving up on that throughout throughout my childhood and my school and schooling and everything else of course you know i was set up for a pretty interesting trip a lot of judgment a lot of uh, telling me i'm crazy and and all of that stuff and but coming through that to where i am now I realized that there was some some major major things that needed to be able to be shifted here on the planet that you know and I became so uh, intent on on helping people shift into new states of being because I knew first of all when I was young I I wanted people to know that 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 God was real and then later on in life as I worked with it, I wanted to know, have people know that God was real right inside them. And then it went to that you are God. Really, we're the ones we're waiting for. And uh, someone just messaged me here about, about a live chat. But in my... In, in, in this experience of, of moving through these different phases in my life, it was quite interesting. And I came up with ideas, different things that, and then when it really hit home and resonated very hard is that we have to take our power back from society. We have to take our power back and become a sovereign being again. And this is why, you know, why I put out that video. And other videos that I do too. And, uh, but the free will activation coming back to our sovereign right to our own experience as source 
uh, under the law of free will, right? I don't know if you guys know this, but the law of free will is is a law that society tries to get you to forget about, right? They don't want you to know about that law because if that's present in your life and you say, now I am the law of free will, then that changes a lot of things because then you start moving into your sovereignty as a being, as, as that you and source energy have a direct relationship, no middlemen, uh, you don't have to do a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, work to get to that point or anything else. You already are. You came in that way. And that all you have to do is take the ego stuff and move it aside. I was trying to convince you not to, not to go here and step into it. And you realize that you and Source Energy are the same being. You are the same being. You're the one creating. You're the one desiring and creating. And Source Energy is becoming what it is you're creating so that you can experience it. So it's all about experiences. So starting out at a young age, yes, I evolved along the way. I just wanted people to know God. And then, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I went out and I was walking, which I love to do out on the country roads and down through the gullies. And I was on the other side of the gully. And I remember talking with God because I didn't know that you couldn't talk to God, that you had to go through all these different people and whatever. I just talked directly to God. And I talked to God and I said to God, you know, it would be really, really nice for my parents to know that you actually exist. Could you make the thunder roll, you know, across the sky? And I'm going to go home and I'm, I was just little. I, I'm going to go home and I'm going to tell my parents that you're going to do that. Well, I went home, and when I got home, I realized that uh, we had visitors over, and I was a little embarrassed to tell my dad about this, but it was a good learning lesson for me. But I was embarrassed to tell my dad about this, so I didn't. And then the thunder rolled. And my dad went outside and took a look, and he said, that's strange. He says, there's thunder, but there's not a cloud in the sky. And I went, to myself because I knew that there was an answer to my to my request and of course as you know later on you can tell a person you know well I did that you know I talked to, to to have this happen and they go yeah yeah sure um, but I knew it that was the interesting part was that I knew it and I never forgot it and we all have experiences if we start to tap into that that we we know things we've experienced things you know we may have buried them but we've we have those experiences too where we as a child uh questioned and wanted to 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 explore more now this is the real sweet stuff this is the stuff that's going to transform you right and this is part of what I do in eliciting this from people to get them to come back into that energy. Victoria wants to know, can I give tips on how to get out of a negative spiral? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tip. Again, you know, a tip is like a, is like a movie trailer. Uh, it's best to come watch the whole movie, right? But I'll give you a tip. The, the tip is that it takes a bit, Victoria, for us to understand that our imagination has been under attack ever since we were children. And that most of us don't understand the power of our own imagination. Our imagination is like a portal. Uh, it opens up to other dimensions, other places, other things. And these are just as real 
as what they've got going on here as what they call reality. So if you understand that aspect, that your imagination is very powerful. Now, if you want to change states, which we're talking about here, because it's a negative spiral, is now a state that you're committed to and determined through fear to have continue. Inside yourself, Victoria, you need to say, stop, I'm doing this to myself, okay? Own it, right? Ownership is the best thing ever because then you get to learn what a goddess you are because stop, I'm doing this to myself, okay? If you break it down, I'll share with you, if you break it down, there are pictures in your mind, words you're saying to yourself, and feelings you're having. And in the negative spiral, you're having negative pictures, negative words, and negative feelings that's causing a loop. Okay? And all we need to do is shift that internal representation inside of us, and then we start spiraling upward that fast. The best way to do this, Victoria, is to... Focus on an image or a, or, or a feeling of yourself out in front of you in a higher vibration, okay? And as you focus using your imagination, you're opening up a porthole to a new state of being. What will happen as you focus on that and you start describing to yourself, well, she's you know, the me that's already out of this is looking like this. Uh, I'm feeling like this. Uh, I've got a glow about me. You just start getting descriptive about what you're seeing, hearing, and feeling. You want to hit all three levels outside of yourself and see yourself in the state that you want to be in. Now, there's a, a little mind trick that happens that a lot of people don't know about. And that's called the mirror neurons that we have. You know, you can't look at somebody, even me, on a screen, without starting to copy and mimic what they're, they're feeling, what they're doing, their vibration, all of that, right? So I could go into a high state, and I know this. I can go into a high state right in front of you, and you're going to feel something. I'm looking through you and seeing the God, the goddess within you. And simply in my mind saying hello. And it starts to raise vibration. Why? Because the mirror neurons that you have start to mimic what, what's going on. Now, what if you could take that, I thought, you know, as a, you know, creative genius that I am, what if you could take that and make that self-actuated? What if you could see your own image of yourself in a higher state and you look at it, you would start copying what you're seeing and you'll change your state and start going into a higher vibration. So that's your key to get out and that's your little, that you asked for the the hint or what did you call it a tip so first of all all this happens when you own who you are that you're both you'll take yourself down you'll take yourself up remember that taking down is the ego tell it to get out of the way right? Say, I'm taking control, and I'm the infinite. You know, I did this the other day. Like, I'm always working and playing and practicing different things. And so the ego pops in, and I went, you know what? You're infinite. And it freaked right out and left me alone. I says, I see the infinity in you. And it just freaked out and left me alone. And then all of a sudden, I popped into this different energy, right? And, but isn't this what it's about? It's about freedom. Right? It's about 
being committed to bringing the magic back to this planet, right? When you're seeing everybody in non-magic. Magic is real, and it happens, and it comes out of you, and it comes out of me, and it comes out of everyone. And so I became a really good facilitator in bringing the magic out of the out of people. I just, you know, I... I studied that and went into that intently until I mastered that of being able to bring the magic out of, out of a person. And other people look at me and they go, how do you even do that? Well, it's quite easy really to me. Right. And I explain how to do it in my courses and I explain how to do that. But, and I teach people how to do that. Once they get how to elicit that magic and bring it out, well, then they can do it for other people too. But it's a uh, time on this planet that we start helping people bring that magic out of themselves, you know, and change the world by changing only ourselves. And then somebody asks a question: How how come? How come you're living such a different reality? I want that. And you go, well, it's easy. First of all, you do this and this and this, right? And you start working with people. The one thing that I have found in life is that if people aren't dedicated to their own spiritual evolution, if they're not dedicated to it and they're sitting there trying to be accepted by society and over here that it, that it, that it's just as waffly, right? It's when you make the commitment and you step over here and say, now's the time. I got to do this. That things start to rock and roll. You show up with determination, commitment, and magic starts to happen. Okay. Any other questions? I'm just waiting to see because there's a bit of a delay um, in this. Now, anytime that you want to, of course, you can uh, book a call with me. And uh, in that that call, uh, we'll talk over your specific uh, uh, thing that you, you want to work on. And... Uh, you can find that on my site uh, in the Discoveries Discoveries program. I just started up a group Discoveries as well. So if people want to bring together people in a group, it's intimate. It's only four people, five counting me, um, in the group. But uh, these group group sessions, we work with each other. You get to practice different things on each other as well in the group and uh, we really move through uh, a lot of things. Now, with that being said, we, uh, we also, uh, a lot of people ask me, well, you do remove the critic, inner child work, um, uh, the empath upgrade. Um, the critic is the big one. You got because the critic really is the ego and you got to learn how to, Put that aside and step into your unbounded spirit. But uh, uh, all of these are included. Uh, these separate programs are all included in the uh, discoveries program. So that makes it quite uh, effective, cost effective for people. Well, somebody had their hand up and now it's gone. <laughs> um. So yeah, you can you can buzz over to my site and uh, and book a call with me. It's supposed to be showing up in the chat room, but I sent a, a thing out, but uh, I don't know if it's there. So if you could tell me, are you seeing anything there? So Jim and Kathy are asking, how do we 
how do we sustain this higher state um this higher state uh of god goddess and manifest from this state Again, the more that you catch yourself going to ego, which is everything else, and come back into the infinite, that infinite space inside of yourself, because nothing is ever kept from us. We set up all kinds of little games in our heads and our hearts that there's something against me here. And there isn't. There isn't. Uh, sometimes we get intuition inside that says you know we should do this or we should do that and we need to listen to that intuition right um manifesting when it starts to become a a struggle in life we got to stop and come back to the root that we were born manifestors we were born, we don't have to become anything. This is the whole thing, Kathy, is that people think they have to become something and they're not getting there yet. And there's this whole, I'm winning, I'm failing that we learned in the school system with A's and B's and all that stuff, setting us up for this whole psychological mess, is that there is no polarity there's no up or down or hot or cold or any of it we're playing that in ourselves with our own own ego so how do we maintain that state is to understand that when the ego comes in when i when i do work with removing the critic and people feel that loving inner voice inside that direct connection to source energy that's been that's been suppressed by the by the, by the ego or the internal critic, it's the same thing. And when they remove the critic and they feel that loving voice, they realize, oh my God, what have I kept from myself my whole life? Is this loving voice. So that's how we sustain it is by understanding that we, we are it already and that we don't have to do anything else but be our self you came in as source energy you will always be source energy no matter what the critic or the ego tries to convince you of because when we as esther hicks says when we croak we're going to understand that we always were it we only got convinced of this so manifestation falls in the same place is that you already are a manifester. Everything that is mismanifesting, that's you. Mismanifesting it. Stop. Let go. Relax. And understand that whatever vibration you have inside, the joy for abundance or the joy for whatever, does manifest. We just have to even up with the vibration that we're giving off or asking for, as Esther talks about, that we're giving off with the actual event horizon of it showing up because we're out of sequence when we're judging ourselves or not staying in that vibration. I hope I'm answering your, your question, Kathy, because um, sometimes I, you know, catch a wave and I'm off on it. But that's the key to it, is understanding and owning. This is what we got to do on the planet. Everyone's under under this. I mean, if you're thinking about this as a profession, you got work everywhere. Because everybody's out of balance with who they truly are. Who they truly are is source energy. But all healing doesn't seem to start there. It always starts with you're a problem, and we got to fix your problem. You're not a problem, right? Your source energy, owning that. Uh, 
Sylv's asked a question here. Hi, Dwayne. Thank you so much. How do we deal with all our friends and family and all others who are not even aware that we live in the social matrix? Well, that's, that's the thing is it's been said over and over again. You got to, you know, you got to pull, you got to pull yourself, you got to save yourself. What happens, what happens energetically when somebody like yourself that's high vibration is in a family unit that's low vibration and you don't stand in your sovereignty and walk out of that? And I'm not saying leave them, but um, walk out of it psychologically. And you walk out of it and you do for yourself because they're always pulling you back into it, right? And each time they pull you back into it, then it says they say, see, it's not real, right? It's the same damn thing that your ego is doing to you, right? Every time that you pull out of source energy and you come back into these, these ego fights and ego things, it's going, huh, see? Every time you stop your discipline, you stop your commitment, and it says, see, you're weak. Right? That's the ego. And so the same thing reflects in the family unit, you see. Because the family unit is pulling you down. It's when, when you make that choice and you step out, now you're someone to bargain with. Right? And I don't mean bargaining to come back here. Because when you step out and you say, no, this is the way it is. In my reality, this is the way it is, and you can have your reality. You step into that and be your sovereign, strong being in that energy. So, And what th happens is that then they will turn and look at you and go, holy. First of all, they'll, you know, do their stuff as, you know, whatever. But you'll start getting them popping out one, one at a time or whatever. And maybe not at all. And that's fine. But they will come out and they'll start talking to you about how do I do this? I, you know, I actually believe because everyone's hiding in that energy, right? They're, they're hiding in that fear to come out, right? But when somebody pops out and says, no, this is the way it is, for me, in my reality, they'll start going, oh, you know what? I think that too, actually, you know? Because remember, this societal hypnosis, it's one machine, let me tell you, to keep humanity suppressed in, in a slave race mentality. And so when you pop out and you break out of it, you've got people that are your friends, that your family, that's trying to get you back into it. Because, And just look at that, step back and look at that for a moment and go, what the hell? Right? If I have my own idea or my own feeling or believe in miracles or believe in this, look at who shows up to, to take me, try to take me out of that. And why would they? Right? Why would they? Because, you know, it's their own healing. I don't know how many of you are practitioners out there, but that's the thing that we come across quite a bit, isn't it? is that we have people that will come up to a level of healing and then all of a sudden, no, 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 and they lose track, they go away or whatever, right? Because they're, they're, they're in this societal downward spiral hypnotic state. And it takes, it does take a dedication. It does take a commitment on everyone's part to say, you know what? I'm going to put this to bed and I'm going to open up to something different because God, we got to on this planet, right? Because it's time to evolve. Well, let's see here. Any other questions? Lisa's asking about, we create our own reality. How does that work with the collective reality? 
That's a good question. And what's happening with the collective reality is it's doing its thing, okay? It's very influenced, it's very hypnotized, it's very, and it's doing its own thing there. But you, Lisa, are separate from that if you choose to be. If you command your own space, you say, this is my game, my rules, I'm governed by the rules of my own game, you step into your own game. You step into your own sovereignty. And you can be in the collective, but be a separate manifesting machine and manifesting differently than the rest of them. The whole idea is that we're heard like creatures. We want to belong to communities and groups and be with other fellow people. Uh, we want to be with tribes, you know, but tribes are about war. Uh, you don't want to be in that energy. You want to be in your own childlike energy, creating and delightful things for yourself. And you see the collective and wanting to be around, be involved in the collective reality or changing, which is worse, changing the collective reality because that's an unending, never, you're never going to reach a conclusion there because there's too many people and their energy is all over the place, right? One's fighting this, one's, uh, one's arguing about that, the other one, you know what I mean? Like it's just chaotic. You come into your own space and you find peace. And in that peace, you create your own reality. And so in amongst what's happening to society, you're in your own state of being. And you're creating your own reality out in front of you. And you'll see things different than what they see. You'll literally see more of a, of a tranquil world than they see. And after a little while, you'll notice that they'll say, yeah, but it's, this is happening and that's happening and this is all happening. And you go, not my reality, son. Because we do have the ability to have our own singularity, our own reality within, within the chaos. Now, this is a good thing. Because when we have that within ourselves, then people start asking questions, and you go, "Yeah, step out of step out of the matrix, man, and come into this space." And then the next thing you know, we have a whole new collective going on that is more aligned with the magical consciousness, with source energy, than we've had before. And this is that evolutionary experience that's happening. We're stepping out of collective reality. Collective reality, uh, while they're still wanting this, uh, uh, you know, to to be to be a collective uh, without raising their vibration, uh, you might as well not go there uh, because it's not going to accelerate you it's going to take you to where they are so i hope that answered your question lisa any other questions uh let's see so how do i open live chat I see that in here, that if I open live chat, I'll have that figured out by the next time for sure.
Marcus says, thank you, Dwayne. I'm just absorbing and healing all that is keeping me on the surface level with my big toe in the water. Okay. Cool. Um, also, uh, I was going to send you something else here, but but if you uh, what I sent you before there, if you want to book a a call with me and talk over um, what you would like to you know ask me about when it comes to uh, booking a discoveries program or the training or anything else, feel free to do that. I sent that link to you. Um, I'm supposed to be able to just. Uh, I've have I had I had another one here, but it doesn't seem to be seem to be in the chat. So anyway, uh, I guess that's it for today, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Um, supposedly, this is supposed to have a a um, a replay for you guys after. We'll see how it works. Uh, I used this years ago, but I've come back to it again, and uh, I'm going to see how it how it actually functions for us before making the decision to get it completely. But uh, I think uh, everyone heard me fine and seen me fine, and and if not, if you please, uh, if you would, let me know uh, if there was any glitches. Okay. All right, so um, now I have something here. I'm just learning this, sorry. But uh, I see Lisa put a question up, and uh, or I did that. I'm not sure. Well, that's good to hear. So you can find me at DwayneHartman.com uh, or on my Facebook page, Dwayne Hartman. I also have uh, uh, a page over there called DwayneHartman.com as well. And uh, we'll talk again. Uh, blessings to you all. And bye-bye for now. <laughs>